Hi there ladies and gentlemen, this is your neighborhood friendly Oxhorn here with another gaming <clears throat> um, exclusive. And I am exclusively showing you how to build a formation in Crusaders of the Lost Idols. Now the impetus of this video was that I started playing this uh, casual idol game and uh, I had a question about uh, increasing my DPS using different formations. So I tried to research myself how to find the, the right formation and every video I watched and every guide that I saw had characters that had way low DPS, much less DPS than mine. So I uh, figured what I would do is I would just shoot my own video and share with the world what I've done in hopes of uh, giving you guys some ideas and hopefully learning something from you. So the, the goal of this video is just to share with you my different formations to show you what I've done to increase my DPS. <laughs> so uh, with this game, Crusaders of the Lost Idols, you spend 10, 20 minutes uh, leveling up your characters, purchasing new Crusaders, and so on and so forth. And then you just let the game run for like ever. Uh, <laughs> I think I've had this game running for nine days now. And what I do is I just let the game play and my characters uh, accrue gold over time. And then, you know, 24 hours later, I sit down and spend the gold and leave. So it's, it, it's an extremely casual game. It's not for hardcore players, but I, it, I enjoy putting my formations together and uh, finding new ways of organizing my units to increase their DPS, which is what I'm going to share with you now. So I have two formations. My number two formation is this one, which increases the gold that I earn by 930%. See here in the top left hand corner? <clears throat> it says 930. That's the gold bonus that I'm currently enjoying. But watch when I switch to number one. Number one is my DPS formation. These characters have much higher DPS, but as you can see, my gold bonus is only 31%. So let me briefly explain to you how I got such a high DPS at 173 S, which the thing stands for septillion or something crazy like that. And uh, then I'll show you how I got such a huge gold bonus in my other formation. So in my DPS formation, I have first the princess, which is a low-level character, but the reason I include her in this formation is because every upgrade she has increases the DPS of all crusaders in the party by 10%. Uh, 10, 20, 30, 40. Uh, that's 40%, so you get 40% DPS bonus for everybody just by having her in the party. And that's huge, especially for your heavy hitters. She also comes with this great ability called Firestorm, which does uh, half of an enemy's damage, which is great for boss fights. So even though she's uh, not a heavy hitter, I, I have her in the party. But because she doesn't hit very hard and because her HP isn't very high, I have her way in the back and she doesn't have any multipliers on her. You see these little gray bubbles kind of hovering over? These are multipliers or or buffs, so to speak, that each of these characters is getting, and the orange arrows show you from whom they're getting the buffs. And as you can see, my princess uh, doesn't have any buffs. <clears throat> it's because she's not that powerful. Next up, I've got a Nate Dragon, and uh, he's uh, he's the 20th Crusader that you can unlock. Uh, so he starts with with uh, pretty powerful DPS, but the thing that makes him most powerful are these upgrades. Uh, increase the base DPS of all Crusaders by 10, by 10, and he's got that twice, right? So a 20% increase in DPS to everybody in the party. Plus, he comes with an ability that says uh, Double Dragon. Increase the base DPS of Nate Dragon by 150% when Natalie Dragon is also in the formation. So if you use Nate Dragon, and then if you use his sister, Natalie Dragon, she also has the exact same buff, which equals a 300% DPS increase uh, for these two characters, if you have them both in the party. They're both heavy hitters, so I've got them both to, to take advantage of that. 
Then I've got Artaxes the Lion here. Here he is. And I wouldn't have him in the party except for he's got this Roar ability, which increases the DPS of all units in front of him by 65%. So any of your Crusaders who are in the column in front of him get a huge DPS increase, which is, uh, which is really important. And that's why he's in the back row. If you were to put him in the second row, then his bonus would go to this row, which is only two. So by putting him in the back row, you get to buff three different Crusaders with the 65 DPS buff, which is really important. Um, plus, he has this unique ability called Simba's Pride, which increases your critical chance by 50%, uh, which is useful in boss fights. Uh, finally, for this back row, I've got this King guy. He's called uh, King Reginald the Fourth. And I'm not terribly pleased with this guy. If you guys have suggestions for a better unit to place here, let me know. But I have him because he increases all DPS of all Crusaders by 10% just by equipping him, uh, by having him in the party. And he's got this ability called King's Command, which slows, uh, freezes all enemies for five seconds. Here it is right here. King's Command. And the reason this is important is in boss fights. In a, in a boss fight, you have a bunch of minions like what you see coming towards you. And uh, finally, after you know 15 seconds or so, the boss appears. So what you can do is you can wait till all the minions get really close to you, then you can freeze them in place, which gives the boss enough time to get on the screen so that you can use Firestorm, which uh, will take all of their health down to 50%. And you want to make sure that you use Firestorm on the boss because it's going to make your life so much easier. Uh, so he's great for boss fights, which is why I have him in my DPS column. Alright, let's talk about column 2 here. First, I've got Mercy, the, wad, the, mad, the mad wizard. And he's my highest DPS character. As you can see, he has 142 base DPS. And he's only level 350, so I've dumped a ton of money into him to get him to 350. But uh, he's definitely not my highest level character. But uh, aside from his high DPS, another thing that makes him useful is this alchemy ability, which heals 10% of every crusader's health every uh, half a second, which is useful in boss fights. And the rest of his upgrades all increase his DPS, except for this one, which increases the DPS of all crusaders by 15%. I think you can see a pattern here. I'm uh, putting in my formation every character that has an upgrade that increases the DPS of all characters by a certain percentage. <laughs> the highest ones make it into my DPS formation. So he's really useful and uh, that's why I have him in my DPS column. Uh, next up is this owl in a top hat, which is Kahuri the Witch Doctor. And the reason I have him in my party is, is this, this buff called Coffee Potion. And what it does is it increases the DPS of all Crusaders next to him by 35%. Now, because of that, you need to make sure that you arrange him properly. Watch what happens if I put him here. My DPS goes down. And the reason for that is because this buff is only affecting four Crusaders. But if I put him here in the middle of my formation, it's affecting five Crusaders, or six, six Crusaders. So I'm getting uh, much more, I'm, I'm, uh, my multiplier is working on many more units. And so uh, uh, I put him in the middle of the formation. Additionally, you wanna make sure that you arrange your highest DPS units around this guy to take advantage of that. So these guys are all in the S's, um, except him. But I have to keep him at the back because he's giving um, a buff up here. So even though her DPS is higher than his, if I bring her down here, my DPS is going to go down significantly because I lose on the lion's buff. He's buffing these guys by 65%. Um, I know another nice thing about the Witch Doctor is he automatically heals minions in front of him by 50% uh, uh, or 30% of their overall health every second. Uh, so ideally, I would love to put him right here so that the tank is being healed every second, but I can't because I need the buff, the buff from this character, which I'll explain in a moment. And then finally for this row, I've got Jim the Lumberjack, who's an incredibly powerful character, even though he's one of my earlier characters. And the reason he's so powerful is because of this buff called Sharpen Party, increases the DPS of Crusaders in the same column as Jim the Lumberjack. So it, it by, by 50%. So 
I'm putting him in my DPS column because his buff is going to increase all of their DPS by 50%. Well, that of course meant that I need to level him up. So he's level 750, uh, which is the highest level minion or the highest level crusader I have because I needed to make sure that his DPS was high enough to take advantage of the roar from the lion and the coffee from the owl. Additionally, he has he's he's got another ability which increases his DPS by 100% if he's next to another Crusader. And um, in this formation, he, he's getting that benefit as well. All right, let's go to my third column here. And uh, you see at the top of the column, I've got this Dark Griffin character. And he doesn't have very high DPS, but the reason I have him in the party is because of this passive ability called Under My Wing, which uh, makes any Crusader in the column in front of him take 65% less damage. So it's great for your tank. You can see now why I wanted to put my owl in the top hat here, because in combination with the Griffin's ability, the tank you have here is going to take 65% less damage and be healed for 30% of his health every second, making your tank nearly invincible. But my strategy is not to depend upon the invulnerability of one tank to win. My strategy is just to increase my formation's DPS so much so that I bl plow through all minions before they can even reach my tank. And uh, if I ever get to a level where that doesn't happen, I just stop and I upgrade my units until it does happen. So I'm using this guy for that, uh, for emergency situations. Plus, <clears throat> he also comes with an upgrade that uh, gives 15% DPS to all Crusaders. Again, uh, fitting with my strategy. Then we've got this guy right here, Sasha the Fierce Warrior, and her ability is great. She's got this Bulwark ability, which increases the DPS of all Crusaders behind her, in the column behind her, for, by 40%. So you can see everything coming together. This guy increases this line by 65%. This guy increases this line by 40%. This guy increases this line by 50%, and then this guy increases not only this whole line, but two members in the lines before and and behind him by 35%. By, uh, and that's how I have such a large number of... Um, that, that's how my DPS is so high. It's simply by arranging these guys in such a way to take advantage of all of these multipliers. And I already talked about Natalie. Um, so that's my DPS unit. Uh, what you can do is once you have your units in a, in a formation, hover over the save and, the, and save in, into a slot. I have my DPS formation in the number one slot. Let's go to number two. You can see my DPS go down because this is my gold farming formation. And it's more or less the same. I've got many of the same faces. The major differences are these two characters the Detective Kane and my Gold Panda. Let me talk a little bit about the Gold Panda first. His DPS is not very impressive at all, but his upgrade tree looks like this. Increase all gold found by 25%. 25, 25, 50. So that's 125% uh, that's just by upgrading this guy's normal uh, path. And then he can get items that increase your gold even more, increase his gold by 10%. So I've got him in my party just because uh, he uh, increases the gold found by a huge percentage. Then I stack him with Detective Kane, and the reason for that is because he's got a great ability called Aha, which increases all gold found by 25% for each Crusader in the same column as Detective Kane. So you can see why it's so important to use him in this back row, because this back row has room for four different crusaders, which gives you 25% increase in gold uh, for each crusader. That's a 100% increase. So 100% from Detective Kane, 150% uh, uh, from the Panda. All, all of these bonuses and buffs combined brings my gold bonus up to 930%. And I'll show you what happens. So each one of these is 27.8 lowercase s when I have this formation, but when I switch formations, take a look at what the gold is worth. It's only worth uh, 3.53S, 3.53S. So over 20S more by having this formation. And so this is what I do. 
I when I'm playing the game and I want to kill a few bosses or whatever, I go into my DPS formation and I plow through it. Then I switch to formation number two and just walk away. And uh, these guys will farm money for me for 24 hours or so and until I'm ready to play again. Then I log on, play for 20 minutes, and then switch back to these guys. Uh, so there you go. Those are the formations that I use. Uh, it's pretty straightforward. I'm just maximizing the multipliers uh, that these guys come with and the different uh, arrangements within the formation. Um, and I just tinker around a lot. Sometimes I, I discover new ways to arrange the units just by dragging them around and seeing if my DPS increases. So uh, if you decide to play this game, it's, it's a fun time waster. Uh, don't do it at work or anything, but you know, it's fun to, to, to do every now and then. 10, 15 minutes a day or so. All things in moderation, ladies and gentlemen, all things in moderation. So there you go, this is my guide on how to make the two perfect formations for Crusaders of the Lost Titles. I've played the game for 20 minutes and I can now leave and ignore it for the next 24 hours of my life. Alright, you guys have a good day, thanks for watching.